Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. I'm working on getting this Monarch situated where it needs to be for doing its work. And I got the crane set it down on the floor and I've got it sitting on the pads on all the corners. Twisted the level. Show you my setup here. See, I've got two levels set up and I don't move these. They stay in the position that they're on on the carriage and I traverse the carriage and get my readings. That way I don't induce any errors about sitting them back in different places. And I've got this one here shimmed 10 thousandths so that there's a 10 thousandths per foot fall in the bed coming back to the headstock so coolant and stuff will help to run back to the sump. Uh, if it was dead level, it would have a tendency not to all run back as well. So giving it a 10 thousandths fall means it's pretty well flat, but it's got enough slope to it that it should run back. So that's built into this. And then I've traversed this back and forth on here like a thousand times, getting it uh, as close as I can get it, what seems to be. And basically I get uh, in the twist, I get roughly a thousandth variance this way from one end to the other. Uh, actually, the ends are both the same and the middle shows that, the, that it's actually humped up here in the middle. Uh, don't know why that is. Uh, the, only one of these screws in the floor is even touching and that's just to try and get some of the twist back out of it. Uh, prefer for none of them to really be because then it makes the traverse level show that it's flat. Right now it shows it's slightly humped up. So I don't know if it's slightly humped up from having been supported that way or if it's set forever on the center feet and it's got, it's taken a set to a bow or if actually the machine is built with a bow to compensate for when you're turning the deflection that would occur in the middle. Kind of find that hard to believe that they would have done that, but you never know. Maybe they did. You know, you're only talking a thousandth and a half over 16 feet. So it would be very easy to have way more deflection than that in a shaft here. So I don't know, maybe it's built in. It's, I would assume you would be have more wear in the middle of the lathe than anywhere else, but uh, this is actually showing that it's high in the middle using the levels, but levels are not really the important part. The most important thing is really how the lathe cuts. Uh, and last I installed this purposely somewhat out of level for cool and draining reasons, but it should be pretty close. So I'll show you my setup here. I know it's pop. I know it's popular to do the two collar method and turn two points and then tweak the bed in order to get those two points to turn the same diameter. And I did that in the past, but I have since become not a fan of that. Uh, if the machine has wear in it, that's probably pretty poor practice because the only thing you prove is that it cuts the same here as it does there, uh, anywhere in the middle here, uh, who knows? So you're, if there's wear in the bed, uh, you could be tweaking your headstock over or up or down in order to make it cut true, but it's not pointed the length of the bed or center to the bed, which is what you really want because you could have a machine cut great here that's pointed like this in the air if the bed is swooping down and the only thing you would know you wouldn't ever know about the middle part being down because you're only doing the two ends and so you can't see in the middle that you got a swoop which is normally what you find where in a bed it's usually swooped out so what I'm doing is using a piece of hydraulic cylinder that is ground. So it's essentially a test bar. It's as good as I've got for a piece of test bar. 
Uh, this is a piece of probably a two inch. And I got almost like two foot of it sticking out of the chuck here. Yeah, we're just over two foot. Not really from the chuck. We're setting 27 inches right now. So that's a reasonable distance out to be. And I know that this is not perfect. I've indicated it in up here as best as I can get, and I'm sub 1,000s run out out here at this end. I've banged this around, and I'm getting. Somewhere around two and a half thousandths run out. So, what I'm going to do to compensate for that is, is I'll have to take the highs and lows and divide that, and that will tell me the center line here of which way this thing's pointing. So, That was low, that's the high, right about there is the in between. So, theoretically, if this thing's exactly straight and it doesn't have any bow in it, if I traverse this on this line, I should be pretty close to straight. So, As you can see there, it's looking pretty good. Let me switch to a more sensitive indicator. Keep in mind, we're now using a tense indicator on here, so it's a super sensitive. All the way to the one is a thousandth. Still touching. So, 
over 27 inches, I'm showing less than two tenths variance. That suits me plenty good on a machine this size. All right, hopefully got a setup you can see here. And I've got this thing dialed in as good as I can get it probably. I'm showing a, about a thousandth run out on the shaft. And there is some variation in diameter within a thousandth too, so I wouldn't expect this to look perfect, but I think it's gonna be close. So let's traverse this thing. That's 24 inches of travel, and we're showing four tenths droop in that bar, and that's about what it is probably for that length stick out, and uh, about a half a thousandth difference here. It could also be bend, or this probably. Some of that diameter difference is showing up here too. Because uh, it's a little smaller out here than it is up there. It all checks within about a thousand. So overall, I'm gonna say this is pretty good to be that. There's that run out. Showing about two thou on that one indicator and thou and a half on that other. Remember, these are tense indicators. So we're talking extremely small amounts of variance. And it appears to be in line, so, you know, just my finger will easily pick it back up. Or push it over, or pull it back. So, it's hard to say exactly, but it's, uh, it's extremely close. Going by the run out on that gauge, it's at least a thousandth undersized because it's zero up here on this end. So the fact that it doesn't come back up to zero indicates that it's a thousandth under. So it might be a thousandth low on this end overall, which is pretty close to what that's showing. So uh, it's probably right. So I'd say within this 24 inches, it's in under a thousandth over the entire length. So I'm satisfied with that. See if I can't find something to put in there and cut and see how it does. All right, so I got this eight foot piece of pipe because pipe's cheap and what I could find, it was long. So I'm gonna use this for my test bar. Hopefully there's uh, not so much bow in it that I'll be able to turn it to true to do the test, we'll have to see. It's got a fair bit, let's take a look. You can see it's got some label wobble, but it's not terrible. So, I'll run this thing down and take a pass.
selective heat straightening. Got a little less of the whip out of it. So we'll run down through here again, just barely touching it. See how it does. We'll work its way down and see if we can't get a nice straight even diameter shaft over this length. So I had to shorten this up because it was too much vibration. I'm gonna try just to take a couple of light cuts on here and just measure for size and uh, see how close it's doing over this long length. So I'm gonna change out to a different bar that should cut better. This being pipe, this long length, it's got a lot of vibration and resonance. It's not good. So uh, had I start with a shorter length and not got it started, chattered i probably could have done all right but since i started with a long length and got chatter in it uh, it's hard to get chatter back out of it so take a lot of turning to get that back to that point and we're not gonna go that far because there won't be anything left of this pipe time that happens probably so let's fire and face inverter and give it a go So I've got this piece of three inch bar stuck out about three feet. And I'm gonna try and take just a light cut all the way down the length and see what kind of dimensions and taper I get. Hopefully that'll clear.
Well, hopefully that shiny and black there indicates just a little bit out of uh, center on my drilled center. Or it could be if there's paper wear in the machine. The only way to find out is I'm going to have to take another cut, get this thing all cleaned up, and do some measuring. So I'll do that and bring you back. The battery's almost dead. Alright, so I've got this thing cut in here and it's had a chance to mostly cool down and equalize. Still a little warmer on that end. I am going to have to try and take the bearings apart in that tailstock because it runs warm. So I need to try and do something with it. But let's, uh, let's see how this thing will cut. So fire the lathe up and I'm going to try and take just the smallest amount I can to put the least heat in it. And we'll check and see what kind of dimensions I'm getting. Sixty-six and a half. Six. Looks like it checks within a thousandths and a half, roughly, over this length, and it appears to be tapered. The interesting thing is that it actually gets smaller out there, so the tailstock is either probably pulling it over. It may need a little bit of adjustment, but uh, ain't too bad. I'm actually satisfied with that. Uh, it'd be a half a thousandth per foot, roughly, in diameter difference which is a pretty good tolerance. Tail, I don't know. This, I've got the ambles locked on this. It barely scoots on there. Same thing right there.
there. It's getting a little bit looser. You can see the wiggle. See the wiggle gets more there. And even more there. Quite a bit there. Bow smaller right there at the end. This camera is a good tool. I want to take the tailstock loose and see how much this bar moves, if any. See how true it's sticking out of the chuck or if it's being forced one way or the other. Maybe pulling it this way a little bit. So I just took another light cut, uh, didn't change anything other than I tightened the bolts down that hold the tail stock to the bed rather than just using the quick clamp that blocks into the side of the bed and we'll see if that makes any difference. Uh, it's not going to take much to get a thousand so before I go adjusting I want to find out where I'm at as far as that goes. Tooth out of that thing. So, I'm going to move it. Well, alright. I've dialed this over another three quarters of a thousandths, which should give me my thousandths and a half off the diameter over its three foot length. So, I'm gonna go fire the phase converter up, kick this thing off. Everything's nice and cool and equalized. So hopefully I'll be able to take a pass down through here and we'll see what this thing looks like as far as how it's turning.
I'm not going to do anything else to this. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take it over to the granite plate and see if we can inspect it and see if it shows anything as far as the diameter difference, how this thing's tracking. Bailey's coming to inspect the job. Is good. This just remains to be seen. Bailey's got his splint off his foot. He's doing a lot better. He's glad to have him back in action. Glad to have the Monarch in action too. All right, Inspector Bailey, let's check this thing out. Got my best brown and sharp. Here, we'll take some readings. All right, so taking a look at these numbers here, I've got a range from 2.4372 inches to a high of 2.4387 inches. So about a thousandth and a half variance in the diameter over this three foot length and it's showing that it's biggest here in the middle and then tapers back out so some of this could be due to tool deflection of the cut because it is pretty easy if you can see that indicator move but with one finger i can bow it two tenths on this bar so a little of that might be that uh, or it could just be the wear in the machine is probably more likely. Uh, this is probably where it cut the most. Uh, gets up here close to the chuck. Of course, it's tight and rigid. And it's tight and rigid out here at the tailstock. And in between, it's, you know, subject to a lot of variance. But I'm pretty happy with that for a machine that's 50 years old and done who knows what in its life and no doubt made a ton of chips uh, to have it within a thousandth and a half over three feet it's pretty good you know a lot of the imported uh one two three blocks are only a half a thousandth a foot tolerance so uh, this would fall within that range so um satisfied that my alignment's pretty good or wouldn't be turning like this so i'm gonna say this machine is ready to go into service and start doing some action whenever the big jobs come along that it's suited for may not have been able to see that needle move before us if you can see it like this yeah you can see it move on there So, doesn't take a lot, even this two and a half inch diameter shaft. 
it's got a fair bit of give to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed getting to see me go through my process of how I line and check a uh, large lathe like that with the initial level, which isn't actually level, uh, but it's calibrated so that it's consistently level and the 10 thousandths tip per foot that I gave it for the coolant to be able to drain back to the chip pan nice. And then testing it out with the uh, hydraulic cylinder ground shafting to uh, verify the headstock alignment that uh, it was pointing true. So did that, and then once I did that, we put a test bar in, made some cuts, and then aligned the tailstock, moved it over. I think I wound up moving it over about two and a half, maybe three thousandths in order to get this to cut true uh, on diameter over this two foot length, or pretty well as true as this machine's gonna cut within a, a thousandth and a half and three feet, which I think is pretty respectable. Uh, I've run a lot of machines that were way, way, way worse than that. Uh, it's a pretty solid number, I think, for an old machine. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.